Good evening. We would like to read a story for you this evening from Circle Round, Raising Children in the Goddess Tradition. The story is called Thomas the Rhymer. It's a retelling by Starhawk of a 13th century Scottish ballad. Circle Round and I'll tell you a story about the fairies. On a bright day in early May, when the warmth of the sun had finally burned away the chill mists of the Scottish winter, Thomas of Earlston laid himself down on a grassy bank in the shade of a hawthorn tree. The sweet flowers of the May tree, for so the hawthorn is called, perfumed the air and bees buzzed around his head. The peacefulness of the day lulled him to sleep. The sound of the bells woke him, opening his eyes. He looked out over the green moors, dotted with heather and ferny bracken, and saw riding towards him the most beautiful woman he could ever imagine. She wore a grass-green skirt and a velvet mantle. She held her head high and proud. Her horse's mane was twined with silver bells, so that as she passed the air rang with a high, sweet sound. Thomas jumped to his feet, took off his hat and swept a low bow as she rode up and halted before him. Lady, goddess, queen of heaven, I hail and greet you, for never before on earth have I seen any one like you, he said. The woman laughed, tossing back her hair, which was as bright as silver. Oh no, Thomas, she said, I am no goddess. I am the Queen of Fair Elfland, who has come to visit with you, and you now must come with me and serve for seven years for good or ill. With those words, the milk-white horse she rode turned, and Thomas found himself jumping up onto the horse's back, clasping his arms around the Queen's waist. The horse began to run faster and faster until it seemed to Thomas that they were riding faster than the very wind itself. They rode on for days and days, through rivers of red blood up to their knees, as if they were riding through the tides and currents of all life that flowed in the veins of every living human being. The sun and the moon disappeared, and Thomas lost all sense of day and night. The air was bright with the silvery glow of twilight and his ears were filled with the roar of the sea. On and on they rode. I'll take over now. At last, when Thomas had begun to believe that they would never come to the end of their journey, the landscape around them began to change. The tide, the tides of blood re receded, and Thomas began to smell sweet flowers, and to see him around green grass and graceful trees. The horse slowed her gallop to a trot, then to a walk, and at last she stopped in front of a huge old apple tree that was heavy with ripe fruit. Lady, let me pick some of that fruit for you, Thomas offered. The truth was, he was terribly hungry and thirsty himself, but he wanted to be polite. Oh no, Thomas, the Queen said, do not eat the fruit of that tree, for what grows here in my country contains all the great power of life and death in their pure forms. The food is, this food is too strong for mortal human beings. To you, it would be poison. Instead, let us get down from this horse and rest. And rest, I mean. And I will give you sweet wine to drink and a good bread to eat. So they dismounted and lay together in the shade of the tree. Thomas ate the bread of Elfland and had never had anything tasted so good to him before. A few bites were all he needed to satisfy all his hunger. And revive all his strength. He sipped the sweet wine the queen offered him and it tasted like all the joy of a fresh 
summer day. When he could eat and drink no more, the queen told him to lie down and rest with his head pillowed on her lap. I will show you three wonders, she told him. As she spoke, his inner eyes opened, and suddenly he could see to the farthest horizons and, be and beyond. To the great stone gates divided the land of the living from the realms of the dead, the whole of the other world lay spread out before him, shining with its own light. Vast forests of silvery leafed trees tossed to their branches in the breeze, and beyond, white horses roared at the back of rolling breakers of the sea. The woods were crisscrossed with roads and paths, like silver threads winding through the canopy of palest moonlight green. Do you see that broad, broad road? The Queen asked. Instantly, a wide, smooth road appeared in Thomas's vision. Crowds of shadowy figures danced along in its pavement. On its sides were booths where good food and ale and every pleasure and luxury imaginable that was displayed. That road is the easy way, the way that most people take, the Queen said. Some call it the road to paradise, but look, look closely. Thomas looked and saw the figures on the road, pushing and shoving each other to reach the enticing. the enticing food and the gorgeous clothing and jewels displayed on the roadside. He saw some people stuffing themselves with meat and fruit and cakes, only to rush past and shove until they could reach the, to, and, until they could reach the next booth and begin again. As if no matter how much they ate, they were still hungry. Others were just dressing themselves in fine robes. But no sooner did they have one thing on than they were reaching for the next thing. Until they were layered so thick in shirts and capes and mantles that they couldn't move. And some were, looking, were loading their necks here with so loading their necks with so many chains of gold, their heads were bowed down to the ground and they could no longer ride. And now look, the Queen said, do you see that narrow, narrow road? Thomas looked and saw a path barely wide enough for one person to walk on. It was lined with bra brayers and thorn bushes that grew so closely together that the few stalwart souls who walked on the road had to be pushed had to push between them getting scratched and bloodied as they as they went that is the hard road the queen said some call it the road of righteousness but look look closely thomas looked and he saw the f pale figures who moved along the gro road growing thinner growing thinner and thinner as if they were starved of life the farther along the road they went, the thinner they became, until many of them were no more than walking skeletons disappearing to the far distance to fade away. And now look, the Queen said in a third, the Queen said a third time. Do you see that bonny bonny road that winds among the green hills? Thomas looked and saw the third road, which dipped under trees and emerged to climb high open moors. The third road was neither broad nor narrow, and along it moved figures who seemed to shimmer with colour. Apple trees and fragrant hedges of roses and ripe berries lined to its shoulders. Those who travelled the third road reached out their hands from time to time to pluck the fruit. With each fruit they tasted, they seemed to glow with deeper toned hues to walk with more joy and propose in each step as and they sang as they traveled so that the sweet tones in their voices drifted upward on the wind to where thomas lay that is the road to fair elf land where you and i must go 
the queen said. You will serve me for seven years and see many wonders, but in all that time, whatever you see or hear, you must not speak a single word. For if you do, you will never get back to your own country, but will belong to Elfland forever. But if you keep silence and serve me well, I will return you to life with many gifts. You will have the tongue that cannot lie to sing the wonders of Elfland and keep our memory alive in the world of sun and moon. And so it happened, True Thomas served the Queen for seven years as true companion, helpmate and lover. In all seven years, oh, in all that time that he spoke not a single word, but he kept his eyes open and remembered all the wonders of Elfland. What were the wonders that he saw? Elfland's lie, Elfland lies on the borders of the land of the dead, in a place outside of time. There, the sun and moon, the markers of day and night, there, the sun, oh, never, there the markers of day and night, never shine and it and all it's tw and all is twilight gray in elfland nothing fades and dies the things for all things exist they're only in their under changing true forms the flower you pluck in elfland is not a rose of earth that will that droops and fades but the essence of roseness itself That which makes a rose a rose and not a cabbage or a daisy. But nothing on of the green earth is truly alive there either. For life is a change. No creature of the living earth can stay too long in Elfland. For we must constantly change or cease to be. And so when the seven years had passed, Thomas lay down one summer afternoon to doze with his head in the elf queen's lap. As he awoke alone under a hawthorn tree on a sunny bank near... Ursildun. Ursildun. He was dressed in a fine green coat and shoes of elfish green. And ever after he could tell no lies, but only the honest truth. His words carried great power and he became an, an honoured poet, making many songs in memory of the Elf Queen, preserving the memory of Elfland in the human world at a time when the green earth was growing even farther away from the realms of twilight. If you ever tire of the good green earth, if you ever need to dip into the well of magic and drink deep, if you ever need the healing that can, that can only come from beyond time, Remember the instructions of True Thomas. Pass by the broad road and the narrow road. Look for the third road. Follow it with a generous heart. And you t and you too may come to fair elf land. Welcome. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you again next time.